Now, there are only two more members of the Seven Shadows left to talk about, so in today's video, I'll be going over Zeta's character, probably one of the most tragic members in Shadow Garden. As usual, I'll be covering her story throughout the series along with some of her powers, abilities, and talents as a character. Of course, this will contain spoilers for her character and the story of the Eminence in Shadow, so here's a spoiler warning just in case. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. <laughs> to start, who was Zeta? Basically, she was a Tyranthrope of the Golden Panda tribe and the direct descendant of the Tyranthrope hero Lily. And before she acquired the name of Zeta, she was originally named Lilim, the daughter of the chieftain. She was allowed to pursue her love of learning and be freed from marital commitments thanks to her exceptional intelligence and talent for everything. However, at the age of 12, she began showing signs of demon possession, so to protect her family and tribe, she offered to sacrifice herself but her family refused to disown her and vowed to find a cure for the possession. So her father set out on a journey towards the east to search for a cure for a possession, but when her father returned, the rest of the tribe apparently found out about the possession thanks to Pathos, a priest from the Holy Church who was secretly a member of the Cult of Diablos. Lilim's father then tried to convince the tribe of the truth about the three heroes and the demon Diablos, which she had learned from the stories left behind by the hero Lily, but they did not believe him. So her father was forced to use a forbidden technique known only to the chieftains that transformed him into a raging beast in order to protect Lilim and their family. And even though the technique greatly boosted the user's strength, it came at the cost of their life, but I wonder if Zeta possesses this ability as well. Anyways, Lilim along with her mother and baby brother managed to escape into the forest, but they were being chased by cult members, so her mother sacrificed herself to distract their pursuers. However, Lilim and her brother were eventually caught by the priest Pastos, who not only showed her the severed heads of her parents, but he also killed her brother in front of her. It was also revealed that Pastos murdered the entire Golden Panther tribe as well, leaving Lilim as the only survivor. She became enraged and attacked Pastos, but she was easily subdued and was transported away to be studied by the cult. While in prison, Lilim was approached by a young psychopath by the name of Shadow who offered her power so she accepted the offer and Shadow helped her to escape while also carrying her demon possession. After learning about the truth from Shadow, she decided to join Shadow Garden to avenge her family and destroy the cult. She was then given the new name of Zeta and became the sixth member to join their organization. Upon joining Shadow Garden and fueled by hatred for the cult, Zeta dedicated herself to rigorous training under the guidance of Sid. Her growth was extremely fast and she would become the fourth strongest member in the organization, trailing behind only Sid, Alpha and Delta in terms of raw power. However, what sets Zeta apart from her fellow Tyranthrope Delta is her reliance on intelligence and technique rather than brute force alone. Her swordsmanship is top-notch, even surpassing Delta in terms of technique, and she is able to master any weapon she trains with in a short amount of time. But Zeta's tendency to get carried away by emotions and lose interest quickly in certain weapons is the reason why she isn't higher in the ranking. Sid even believed that Zeta's swordsmanship could rival Alpha's if she didn't have this bad habit of losing interest. Aside from that, Zeta possesses strong magical abilities, although not at the level of Epsilon, and she is one of the few Shadow Garden members capable of curing demon possession, a technique she learned from a master. She has also learned the blood mist technique of the Vampire Queen Elizabeth, but her proficiency in this technique is lacking due to her aforementioned bad habit as evident during her fight against Delta, which I'll talk more about later in the video. But continuing on, when it came to her physical powers and overall raw destructive power, Zeta can't really compete with Delta although she makes up for it with greater self-control and she is less prone to lose control or go on a rampage. And that's not to say Zeta is weak because she is still quite formidable in combat and is capable of taking down any high-level opponents with ease. That said, Zeta took part in Shadow Garden's first mission which is to rescue Sid's sister Claire Kagano from Vicon Oba, a member of the cult. They would attack the cult's hideout and eliminated all their forces but the Vicon managed to escape. However, Sid later dealt with him and Claire safely returned home. With that, Zeta along with the other girls decided to depart for two years in order to expand the influence of Shadow Garden so that they can better fight the cult. Then the organization underwent a two-year restructuring period, during which Zeta became the head of exploration and reconnaissance due to her innate talents for stealth, a common trait among the Golden Panther tribe. She was mainly responsible for gathering intelligence related to the cult and rarely participated in combat missions due to her frequent exploration and investigation activities. Also, she was allowed to carry out most of her missions alone because Alpha trusted Zeta's intelligence and her awareness of her own limitations to avoid getting into danger. That's why Zeta probably has the most autonomy to do a job within Shadow Garden and she can operate independently without much oversight from an organization, although it did annoy Alpha that Zeta doesn't regularly report back to them. And during the two years, their base had become overcrowded because of the new members, so Zeta was tasked with finding a new location to serve as their base. She would uncover information about the ancient capital of Alexandria and because of her tracking skills, she became part of the expedition to search for the lost city. 
During the expedition, they fought against the Mist Dragon which was eventually defeated by their master Sid, allowing them to make Alexandria their new base. After moving to the new base, Zeta rarely stayed there because again she was often away on exploration and intelligence gathering missions. But when she didn't have any missions, she occasionally helps Eta in her experiments back in Alexandria or just going out for fishing, something she really enjoys. She once even prepared some seafood sandwiches for Gamma to taste and she essentially inspired Gamma to open the Tuna King restaurant. Now after two years, the intelligence gathered by Zeta helped Shadow Garden to grow stronger and finally be able to compete with the crowd. But when Shadow Garden made their presence known to the world during the events involving the kidnapping of Princess Alexa Midgar, Zeta wasn't present for the operation. This absence from Zeta would continue throughout all the significant events leading up to Volume 4 of the light novel where she was briefly mentioned. However, in a spin-off anime called Kagejutsu, Zeta had a more prominent role and we got to see more of her character. It wasn't until Volume 5 of the light novel that she made her official appearance, which I'll be discussing in more detail shortly. Before I go over Zeta's appearance in Volume 5 of the light novel, it is crucial to understand her character development leading up to this point. That's because at some point in time, she became more radicalized in her thinking, even developing a cynical and distrustful attitude towards the world, believing that all the inhabitants were vile creatures. She even started to question Alpha's leadership, believing that Alpha's compassion was a hindrance to Shadow Garden's mission to defeat the Cult of Diablos. As a result, Zeta decided to take matters into her own hands and create a secret sub-faction with the goal of resurrecting the Demon Diablos and using the knowledge obtained from the cult to make Sid immortal. She also aimed to take control of the world and create a religion with Sid as their new god to prevent the cult or people like them from ever returning. Zeta was determined to betray Shadow Garden while shouldering all the hatred and blame of the world just for Sid, which is honestly sad because he still thinks that this is all just a game. Regardless, the only known members of this sub-faction are currently Victoria or also known as 559 and Nina who is not affiliated with Shadow Garden. Zeta apparently sent Nina to infiltrate the Midgar Royal Spousal Academy as a student to befriend Claire when they suspected that she had become the host of the Demon Diablos to protect her from the cult. That said, going over the events that happened in Volume 5, Sid had returned to school after his adventures in Japan and he was greeted by Zeta who brought him a horse macro as a gift for his upcoming birthday. During their conversation, Zeta informs Sid of the disappearance of several students from the school due to the family faction and reveals that the right arm of the Demon Diablos is located beneath the school. After delivering her report, Zeta departs to continue her investigations on the cult's activities around the school but not before leaving her scent on her master's bed as a sign of affection. Later, Sid cooked the fish that Zeta gave him when Delta arrives and demands the fish as a reward. Zeta tries to stop Delta from eating the fish so she ate the fish out of spite, prompting Zeta to attack her. And a bit of context, Zeta has always got along well with the other members of Shadow Garden but with Delta, their relationship has always been hostile. They often got into fights and it usually ends with Zeta running away after making Delta angry or the both of them getting scolded by Alpha. However, I think they don't actually hate each other, instead their animosity towards each other seems to stem from their animal instincts as Zeta is a feline tyranthrope while Delta is a canine tyranthrope, although I have to say that Zeta was often the instigator because she always teases Delta whenever they meet. So back to the fight, Zeta then used the blood mist technique to continuously attack Delta but she manages to evade all of Zeta's attacks. And during the fight, Zeta was almost caught by Delta because her proficiency in the technique was lacking due to a bad habit. That's why Zeta decides to just get serious and activates her ultimate technique, a thousand swords, to summon more than a thousand blades to overwhelm Delta. However, this enrages Delta instead and Zeta realizing that she no longer had any chance to fight back, decides to run away with Delta chasing after her. And this actually happens a lot so their fight always ends without a clear victor. In any case, Zeta easily escapes from Delta and she will return to the school where she discovered that Claire had been transported into an alternate space resembling the sanctuary in the Holy Land on Limworm. Inside the sanctuary, Claire encountered Dark Smile, a named child belonging to the cult and despite her efforts, she was unable to defeat him. Fortunately, Zeta arrives just in time to save her and transport her back to the real world. Then using a new technique she developed, Zeta kills Dark Smile by building up black smoke within her target until he imploded into pieces. Also, Victoria arrives to inform Zeta that Claire was indeed hosting the Wish of Calamity Aurora inside her and this was the key to finally start their plans to make Sid immortal. So with that, Zeta went deeper into the sanctuary to eliminate all the cult's forces stationed inside and using an artifact created by Etta to finish her investigations. She then located the vault holding the right arm of Diablos and upon unlocking the door, Zeta finds the Tyranthrope hero Lily standing guard. The construct of the hero attacks Zeta but she easily dodges it and after confirming her findings, she left the sanctuary to prepare for the next phase of her plans. Afterwards, Zeta visited Sid again and confided in him about her secret mission to resurrect the Demon Diablos but in his typical delusional fashion, he played along with her story still thinking that it's just a game. Unfortunately, this caused Zeta to misunderstand and believe that Sid actually approved of her plans which gave her the determination to go through with her extreme mission. 
Now during the attack on the school by the Fenrir faction, Zeta wasn't really present so she did not help in the rescue of the students trapped within the sanctuary. Luckily, Sid single-handedly defeated the leader Fenrir and his forces to rescue the students. With that, the conflict was resolved, but Zeta soon arrives with Victoria inside the sanctuary to meet with Nina who was currently looking after an unconscious Claire. After taking Claire into the depths of the sanctuary, Zeta began to prepare the ritual to infuse the right arm of Diablos into her, utilizing the knowledge she had gathered from the cult. The ritual was a success so Claire now possesses the left and right arms of the demon Diablos within her. After the ritual, Zeta left to continue with her search for the other parts of the demon, but not before ordering Nina to keep protecting Claire and acting as a friend. And yeah, that was everything we know about Zeta so far, and I think her motives are still quite complicated at this point in the story so we'll just have to wait for future volumes to find out more about her. But it's clear that she is a deeply broken and troubled person. Even after she has welcomed into Shadow Garden, her resentment and hatred towards the world still existed because of her tragic past. But I don't really blame her having to witness the death of her entire family and tribe. However, I personally still have mixed feelings about Zeta's character although I do feel bad for her and I can't imagine how it feels to love and respect someone so much that you start to deify them and wanting to give them immortality even if it means endangering and hurting the people around you. But at the same time, I can't deny that her character is definitely the most nuanced and intriguing as compared to the other girls. As for whether or not she can be considered best girl, I think I'll leave that up to you, the viewers, to decide. <laughs> So that was basically all the information on Zeta's character, probably the most broken person in Shadow Garden and in all honesty, I blame Sid for this because if he took this more seriously, it could have been avoided. Hopefully I managed to give you some insight on her character and do you agree with her ultimate goal? I would love to read your opinions and thoughts on her character down below. Also if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button, it really helps. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.